Guns and Gumbo. This guy, excuse me, Apple White. Yes, sir. Who's the rich uncle, Dad? Which one? I think both. Well, I got a fire. It's our old truck is free. It's mine, but I'll see you nice when you hear that. Thank you. You look better. You called. You really want me to Thank you. fill it. Thank you, big man. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
Two properties oh, with Mill yeah. Street. And he doesn't live in Mill. Yeah, they're like around the corner, corner from each other somehow. Hey, Carrie, once you get going, could I ask you to get my stuff out of my box? Yeah. Not now. I'm saying before, before, before the council okay. meeting. Yeah. Sure. Sure. We can, we can go get it for you right now. Well, we're at. Um, Sorry, wait, it's time. Yes, yes, live. Yep, they're ready to go when you are, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Live study session. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If uh, I could have the camera, please. And there they are. Call the special or the study session of the Lincoln Park Mayor and City Council to order at uh, looks like 632, we'll call it. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, if we could have a roll call, please. Councilpersons Breeding. Present. Higgins. Kelsey. Here. Parkinson. Here. Ross. Here. Salcedo. Present. And Mayor Carnes. Here. <coughs> Evening, everyone. The, the purpose of this meeting is to have a another study session to discuss the signed ordinance, uh, Chapter 1476 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Lincoln Park. Uh, this is the um, second meeting of this, this type, but it's not surprising as it is a very encompassing uh, ordinance and it has many different nooks and crannies, so to speak. So we have our planner with us today and we have our chief building official, Leah and uh, John Myers. So Leah, would you uh, lead off or is it, do you have John doing it? Well, however you two are working it out, go ahead. I did um, threaten that I was going to make him introduce me, but I'm not sure how that's going to go, so I'll just lead right into it. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys have had me back. Thank you. Um, so uh, as you alluded to, we've had, um, we've had a couple of study sessions so far, one in which we talked about um, the sort of wide variety of conditions that are found with signs in the city. And then the second time um, when I came back, I talked to you about some things in the ordinance that really needed addressing um, from an enforceability standpoint and because there have been some changes um, in national law. And so we have taken that feedback, we've taken your survey and um, in the conditions on the ground and John and I have collaborated very closely to come up with what you have um, in your possession, which is a draft ordinance. So this ordinance has taken a stab at answering all the questions. There aren't really any sort of open-ended questions remaining, but nothing is, is solidified, and so anything can be changed. We've kind of gone first and will and have something for you to react to, basically. So I'm just going to, um, oh, okay, we went all the way to the end here. proposed ordinance in front of us it was sent to you it was sent to you a paper copy yes perhaps it's in your box okay um i'll, I'll go, go i'll go I'll see go. would you look at mine too please for me if you know okay. i didn't see it i didn't oh, see a paper okay. copy earlier uh, there's right. nothing in the box you said. oh nothing. well there okay. is nothing then john do you a couple months ago. Have, can you make some duplicates real quickly of this i can well, that's okay. I've got the major highlights in the uh, in the um, uh, PowerPoint, and so for the most part, um, we'll be talking about the same. So I've set this PowerPoint up. Um, I had a series of questions that I presented to you last time, and I've set this PowerPoint up in the same way to address the exact same topics. So, what's in the ordinance is kind of the details of how that was implemented, and so I'm happy to discuss those all day. Um, but this will definitely hit the high points here. So the first uh, kind of goal of this sign ordinance revision was to, to legalize some existing signs. There was a pretty big gap between what the ordinance permits and what is on the ground um, in a couple of big areas. Two, two major sign types, which were just completely not permitted um, in the previous ordinance, 
our, um, but in which we have a lot of in the city, our pole signs that are just on one or maybe on two poles and roof signs that are mounted on the roof. Both of those signs um, are kind of frequently not permitted for reasons of, of safety, for reasons of aesthetics, for reasons of control. We've taken a close look at both of them. Um, and our opinion is that pole signs should now be permitted. Um, there are lots of them in the city. They do not have the same kind of uh, safety concerns that roof signs do. And so with our, our proposal says, you know, let's go ahead and permit them. So they are permitted at the same size as ground signs, which is 80 square feet maximum. Um, and we said, you know, kind of all of the, the building freestanding signs follow the same format of permitting um, one, one sign per street frontage. If you have frontage on more than one street, you can have a maximum of, of two signs, and that second sign will be 75%. Um, of the size of the first sign. So, and that also gets us a little bit into one other thing that we had talked about last time is that we really didn't have any um, any standards for the the variety of sign types. They were just kind of all managed individually, and you could kind of pile them up on your property without any real understanding of their relationship to one another. So, here we have started um, started kind of getting into how we would like to regulate that. Roof signs. So after John and I um, had good conversations about the safety and the administrative requirements to safely permit roof signs in the community, we've come to the conclusion that they, they, they're still not permitted, that it's not the right thing to do to go ahead and um, legalize those signs. They, they, we just don't, we're not set up well to make sure that they are always done in a good and safe manner. So um, best, not to, best not to be inviting new ones, basically. Um, however, non-conforming roof signs that are in safe and operable condition are permitted to read. Re yes, yes, I'm sorry. Jump the gun. Sorry. If it's there today, it's, you're going to grandfather it in. I'm yes. Like yep. Save a lot. We'll be okay. Yep, absolutely. So everything that, you know, exists today, so it works, you know, like any other, basically, you know, provision like that. If it exists today and it's in safe and operable condition, um, then they'll be permitted to remain. And so I did add a little more detail about that um, nonconformity. We had a nonconforming signs um, section in the ordinance. I basically matched it up to the zoning ordinance so that the language is consistent across them. There wasn't much difference to start with, but now they're identical. Um, and that provision, the nonconforming provision says that lawfully constructed signs may continue. Um, alterations are only permitted if they make it more conforming. So if it was too tall and you make it shorter, that's okay. Um, move, if you move a sign though, it becomes a new sign. So even though, you know, it's, you know, might be the same one, but you put it on a new, you, there's no moving of a non-conforming sign, then it would be a new sign. Um, this is straight from our zoning ordinance. It can be reconstructed if the damage is less than 50% of the replacement cost, and that gets estimated by the building official. And a non-conforming status is lost after six months of disuse. So if, as long as it's up, it's operating, it's referring to, you know, the business that's there, we're perfectly a-okay to retain the signs that we have. So mostly these apply to new signs and to um, damage in good condition in the case of a non-conforming one. You did that in good detail? Okay, good. Um, we wanted to also modernize the permitting of temporary signs. So many of these um, were just referenced in the ordinance, but that we didn't have any regulations on them. So... Technically, the ordinance says any sign that's not permitted is prohibited, so that meant that every single um, one of these kind of banners, festoons, everything that we didn't have a regulation for, and our regulations were a little bit behind the times, was not permitted. Well, you know how an unreasonable regulation goes, it just gets ignored, basically, and then that made it difficult for John to enforce because the whole thing was not very cohesive. So we just really wanted to get clear on which of these temporary signs are permitted and not. So the ones that are permitted are banner signs with some size limitations, um, window signs, the ones that, you know, you just the temporary window signs, they'd say open or the hours of operation or help wanted or this is what's on sale this week. Um, yard signs, both wire frame, which are the small, you know, ones that you think of that you see in the yard and rigid frame, which can be taller up, or bigger up to 16 square feet. A-frame signs, those are sandwich board signs, and um, vehicle signs, the ones that are painted on a vehicle. Now, those have to be on a licensed, operable vehicle that is actively in use by the business that the permit holder is attached to. 
But other than that, there aren't any regulations on the vehicle signs. So um, not permitted. And on the other side, not permitted were the inflatable signs. Those are those, you know, the guy that stands up there. Nobody liked those in the survey. That got a big fat zero. Um, feather flag signs. This one might be a little more controversial. Those are the ones that have one tall pole that curves at the top and about six feet of cloth in there. You often see several of them in a row. Um, those get hard to regulate because they never show up <laughs> they basically never show up one at a time. And so then, you know, the question is, how many do we permit? How far apart do they have to be? Do we even like them? Can they go on the roof? I've seen some on the roof here in town. Um, our, our consensus between John and I was that it wasn't worth the regulatory hassle, and we preferred not to. So that, that was our go. But again, this is, this is open to your, your influence. Um, and people signs. So those are the actual, you know, people either wearing a sandwich board, I think that's the older style, but now mostly you see them out there kind of like holding their signs and waving them and flipping them and that kind of thing. We've decided that that's maybe not, maybe, that maybe we don't need to permit those also. So three non-permitted types, five that are, that have new regulations on them. Any questions about those? Yes, I have a question if I may with the chair. So the Lady Liberty that does taxes over on Dick's right. dresses like Lady, you're saying no, she can't do that even if she's on their property? That is where we went with that. But again, this is subject to your review and consideration. I mean, it's very seldom, but I mean, she's out there. Every tax thing has been out there for 25 years. I'm sure it's not the same Lady, lady Liberty, but... <laughs> <laughs> just, in the, in the, the flag, the ones that have the material, the six-foot ones? Yep. We have been allowing them, but only on their property. It had to actually be in the ground on their property. Those aren't, you're saying you're not going to regulate those? Well, technically, we've not been allowing them because the ordinance has not said anything about them. And so they have technically been prohibited up until this time. We have been not enforcing that prohibition, is my understanding. Um, but you are going to allow them now? Uh, so in, in our proposal, we have said no feather signs. If that's not amenable to you, we're happy to take, the, take up that conversation. Well, through the chair, in regards to the feather signs, what if you just had them during business hours and have to take them out? Does that, that bother you at all? Um, it's, so the problem really is enforcement, and that increases the enforcement burden, not decreases it. So, you know, now somebody doesn't have their sign, you know, it's 7 o'clock at night, somebody doesn't have their sign out, do we have to go and write them a ticket? No enforcement. Well, that's up to your enforcement committee, right? I mean, you're going to tell the property owner you're permitted to have the sign, but you have only during business hours, and if you don't comply, then you'll be fined. That's Sure, I th but I think just from the regulatory perspective, if we want them, it makes more sense to to permit them on a for as long as they're, so I don't know, I honestly don't know how long they're designed to last. So I would say probably not more than, I don't know, a couple of months perhaps. And so we would probably place the time limit on, say, you can have it out for eight weeks and then you have to pull them back in. To the, I guess if he's done through the chair, uh, it makes more sense to clean up some of the clutter, doesn't it, than add mud clutter? I mean, I've seen them all along Southfield and they've been up there for a long time on the easement, if I would say that. And, you know, I don't mind if a business just opens up and they want to bring some attention to them, but to have them up all the time doesn't make any sense to me, okay? It does, for, to me personally, it's a detraction of the, of the area, but that's just me. Now, because as advertising, you can put all kinds of stuff to advertise. I mean, they got usually big signs in their windows and they got a big sign on their store. So it's not like you're prohibiting. It's just a point of how far do we want to go with signs in the city, I guess, is that's what this whole thing is about, right? Right. I mean, and, basically, yeah. the idea is, do you want to drive up and down the street? How many of them do you want to see? Do you want to see them at all? Does that, do, in your view, does yeah. that add to Lincoln Park's public realm? The, uh, going back to the enforcement issue, I know we have a hard time just enforcing the regular rules without the seventh, and no disrespect, but the, the, the business owner, if they were all good, we wouldn't have to have an enforcement division. We just have to have them go. And I'm not saying they're all bad, but I'm just saying that the problem is, is that history has proven sometimes you give them an inch they take a mile then you got to go back and reel them back in because they're not either they're not aware of the change or they thought it was changed or they never looked it up or never got the memo right and, and it's less confusing to i guess to my point for everybody including the city is either we do or we don't and that's the that's where i'm going from and i think some of the uh signs that uh 
are talking about with with the temporary sandwich signs. I can understand. I can understand if they're putting them for twenty four hours. Say they're you know whatever they're opened up the business or if they got that's fine. But some of these people have them up twenty four seven, and I think that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some kind of easy way to enforce it and an easy way so everybody's treated the same and also so it doesn't look like a, a long story short a, a, just a bunch of signs laying all over the place you know <laughs> because that's what you get when i i mean to me it detracts from the the businesses it detracts from the neighborhood if i'm driving down there it's just like there's so many signs to look at you know that's fine but now you're looking at the ones that are in the banners now you're looking at the temporary ones and I mean, that's just my opinion, and that's because that's what you're. We're here for. That is. Fuck. But that's where I'm going for that. But anyways, thank you. That's all I had. Through the chair, Your Honor. <clears throat> Question. Sure. The A-frame signs. Yes. Though, are we going to permit those throughout the city then? And I think because right now they're restricted, right? They are restricted right to the um, to the central business district right now, and I did expand that to at least the remainder of the business districts. And also, flipping through this, there we go. Yeah, we, uh, so Central Business District, Neighborhood, Municipal Business District, so all the commercial district, plus the um, multiple family residential district, um, so that, because they often will have, you know, signs out front that say now rent. I mean, I consider them a commercial property, right? They're, they they do have a product that they're selling. And then also, and this, I'd be willing to take some comment on this, and also the community service district so that a church could have a little, you know, we're having our bake sale today sign out front. I like it. Okay. I, I, I agree. I mean, that was Mike's, one of his pet peeves that he fought for before the A-frame for some of the small businesses and everything else so that they could have it. But it had to be restricted and be on their property. It couldn't be on the public sidewalk, you know, or on the easement. I think as long as we maintain to where it's on their property and they're advertising Taco Tuesday, I don't, I don't see where it, it harms anyone. It's not like a distraction like Councilman Kelsey said with the feather thing, that's distractive. I mean, if it was a grand opening, and they're just announcing a brand new business or whatever, you could see them having it there for the first week. Mm -hmm. But to allow it multiple, you know, those type of signs or whatever, I don't think it's, I don't think it adds to the beauty of the city. I think it's distractive for, to, for the drivers, and I don't, I don't see the benefit where the little A-frames, depending on, of course, what, what it is they're advertising, but, you know, if it's, like I said, Taco Tuesday, and they have it out there on Tuesday. I don't see where that harms any other <coughs> businesses or dist distracts or anything else. So that's my opinion. That's that's I, I agree that the, 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 little, the little signs the, 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 that we're talking about, I absolutely like them, and, and I see them on a lot in other communities um, where showing off their businesses, as long as they're not blocking a city sidewalk or a walkway, I absolutely think that's they're, they're needed. Well, I'm going to read you um, the setback regulation because that is an issue in the central business district because there uh, there is no area that's on not on their property, right? So, and this is actually the link because they were only permitted in the central business district. This language hasn't changed. Um, where a public sidewalk is located within the right of way and directly abuts a building with a zero setback, so only in the conditions we described, an A-frame sign is allowed on the sidewalk within 12 feet of the main entrance and with a minimum of three foot unobstructed sidewalk clearance shall be maintained between the sign and the building or other obstruction. An A-frame sign may not otherwise be located in the public right of way, including lawn boulevards. Does that sound like tolerable Three language? Three wide enough for a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chair? Yes. So you're saying these, uh, a lot of these places, they have a, Post stuck in the ground, there's a flag on them on an easement. Are those going to be allowed or should they, they need to go? We have been silent, like we're talking about just a standard flag. Is that well, what you're talking about? Say, I'll do not for, not an American flag, it's just advertising for their business. Um, well, we, we've been silent on flags in general, um, and we can go into that in the ordinance. The previous ordinance didn't, and so if we don't have a problem to regulate why well, introduce problematic reg le legislation, but um, the 
the uh, language about feather flags would not apply to, you know, a, to any other kind of flag. Uh, if it's other than an American flag, so we'll get to the part about how how we can enforce these things. But I will just skip to the good part and say that that Supreme Court ruling that I have been referencing, um, basically the shorthand for it is if you have to read the sign to enforce the ordinance, then it's not a defensible legislate. It's not a defensible regulation for the most part. So if I have to look at what's on that flag in order to decide whether or not it can be there, then that's problematic. Um, there are, I'm sure, exceptions for the American flag, for state flags, for, I mean, there's other legislation that protects things that need to be protected, but I would say in answer to just your question about a flag that is not one of those protected things, our ordinance is silent on it, which says that it's not permitted. Did that, was that clear? Okay, cool. Anything else on temporary signs? Well, Let's, you sure. have a lot more to present. I do. Yep. Right. So let's get go through, through and then go back. What you have, and then and then come back. To sure. The, there, so that we at least get the the main part of the uh, presentation done. Yes. So festoons are now permitted, which is a funny word that means like basically everything that's all the decorations that are not um, signs, but that are the the little row of flags, for example. It's basically anything that's hung on a on a string. So it could be pinwheels. It could be the little flags. Um, it could be a string of lights, although we've specifically defined window lighting because we wanted to regulate it differently. So for the most part, festoons, as shown in the picture, which, by the way, I wanted to um, maybe draw your attention to these images that have been on the slides. They're all from the new ordinance. So we've created, you know, for every sign that has a definition, it also has a little line drawing showing what it is to hopefully cut down on and I mean, there's plenty of confusion in sign language. Um, so the any the little festoons are now permitted. They're they're not um, regulated. They're they're just permitted. Um, balloons and balloon signs, which are different in the definitions from inflatable signs, those are also permitted. They do have regulations. It's like one bunch, no more than twelve balloons. Balloons can't be bigger than two feet. There is some regulation, but you're allowed to have balloons. And um, window lighting. So when I took the survey, you guys liked the little, you know, perimeter lighting around the windows. So we said, okay, four of your windows on the same side of your of the building as your public entrance can be lined with windows. Is that sufficient or lined with lighting? Is that sufficient, do you think? Okay. So those are now explicitly permitted. We did take a look um, at the permitted signage in the Central Business District um, to see how we could sort of increase the visibility, especially being aware that, you know, the trees are kind of at a stage where they're growing in front of the standard sign ban. We expect them to outgrow that, but right now, is there anything we can do, basically? So the wall sign size um, is now a maximum of 100 square feet um, within the Central Business District. I believe it used to be 80. Um, alley, parking lot, and secondary frontage wall signs are now permitted. So that means that, you know, whether you have your sign, so you have, you know, your one wall sign on the front. If you also have a side of your building that faces another right of way, you may have a second sign. If you have, if that doesn't face another right of way but is over a parking lot, you may have a second sign. If you have an alley entrance, you may have a third sign. And oh, that's it for the Central Business District. We um, made sure that perpendicular formats were permitted, the projecting or blade signs that stick out, because a big part of the problem with the speed limit on Fort Street is that you don't have enough time to turn your head and see it. You need to see them coming. So projecting signs are permitted. Awning signs are permitted, which also, because they have the kind of projecting plane to them, you can see. Um, marquee signs for some uses, and those A-frame frame or sandwich signs. And then we also said that monument sides could be installed by a public body to index more than one business, which was, again, something that we could do. We don't have to, but like at the beginning of a block, for example, while you're sitting at that light, you could see the businesses that are in the next block. So I think none of these is a silver bullet that, you know, solves all of our problems in the central business district. But taken together, I do think that they add some visibility for those businesses, especially at this time. And then here we get to the slide um, about Reed versus the town of Gilbert. So on the top is their legalese. We may not restrict expression because of its message, its ideas, its subject matter, or its content. Long story short, if we have to read the sign to enforce the ordinance, it's probably not constitutional. That's a hard regulation to wrap your head around um, because you, I really want to regulate things based on what's on the sign. 
So what that has meant for our ordinance is that for um, it, there's three categories of signs that are called out in almost every ordinance and regulated by content. Election signs. So we said additional temporary yard signs are permitted during the period of 60 days before and 14 days after an election. That's different whether you are on, in a commercially zoned district or a residentially zoned district. You get, I think, let me have this in front of me when I say it so that I get it right the first time. Um, so for the wireframe yard signs, in the commercial districts, you can have one per, per parcel. Nope, those are the rigid frame ones. You can have two per parcel. And then for the election period, um, for 60 days before and 40 days after an election, you can have eight of the yard signs per parcel. That's in the commercial districts. In the residential districts, single family residential um, and the mobile home park, now, here too, I've treated uh, multiple family as a commercial property because that's where they are. They're in our commercial, on our um, <sighs> corridors, um, and they're not like tucked back in the neighborhoods. They're part of the, the more visible public realm. So I've treated them like commercial businesses. In the neighborhoods, however, um, all the time, you can have three yard signs per parcel. Um, they, and so those I would expect to be used for your construction advertising, for example. A lot of times, like when you're having your renovations done, they, the company likes to put your real estate sign um, is another example of what would you know just sort of be unregulated in, in your yard all the time. Or you could have a political sign up all year round. If you think three is too many, now is the time for us to talk about that, for you to have it in your yard at any given one time. I tried to be a little liberal with that, but three seems like maybe it's a lot. For the period around an election, you could have up to 12 signs per parcel. And again, I just picked a big number. John and I did the math. He was like, I don't think you were going to be voting for more than eight people in any given election if everybody is running. And I said, well, <laughs> this is probably true. <laughs> so that number is certainly you know, up for debate. Do you want to see 12 yard signs or do, is it just important to you that you know people can say whatever they want to right around an election? No, people can't. There may be... Can't imagine anyone wanting to vote for twelve different people on a six the six seats, but I don't think you should limit that. But I want to make sure they can't put these signs on the city easement still. Correct. That's correct. Even the election ones. Right. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yes. So that's and how we yes. To the chair, may I point out that if somebody wants to wants to have a sign for each mayor either mayor candidate and the four or six council candidates. That would be seven signs. Mm -hmm. At any given time when we have our elections, there are three school board members up. That's mm -hmm. 10 signs, mm -hmm. okay? Now, our elections now fall at the same time as the presidential election, mm -hmm. the state senate elections, and the U.S. Senate and, con and Congress elections. Proposals. Right. That's not counting proposals. I do not believe that we should limit political science at any time, that is a freedom of speech issue. I'm sorry. So then the regulation, because if we have to read the sign to enforce the ordinance, it is unconstitutional. So the regulation would read, during the period of 60 days before and 14 days after an election, there is no limit on yard signs, and you may have as many as you want. Understanding within this room that they will say whatever they want them to say. Like that we have no way of, say, of enforcing the fact that it must have a political candidate on it. I believe that's what the Constitution wants us to say. Got a question to the chair. What happens if the, and this is probably a constitutional question, but it still comes up, is, and this is, I guess we're going to get into the debate either way, is what happens if the sign meets the standards of being obscene for the city? And that could be anywhere. I mean, there's got to be some kind of, you have kids. I mean, and I don't know if the Constitution allows anything. I mean, I understand that the, the freedom of speech and all that. But there are, like, a racial hatred sign can't be put up, first of all. Okay, that's one of the, I know that's for a fact. So where do you, how do we regulate the what ifs? Okay, because if you don't, then you're right. Then we can't, we don't have any, uh, what do you call them, ordinances that regulate any kind of uh, speech at all. So it would be a free-for-all. So I, I'm looking for the fact is, is there anything that's been addressed already that you know uh, at the Supreme Court, and I'm sure numerous cases have gone up there that and maybe Ed can tell us when that he could look into it. Is there anything, or is it just a free-for-all? If it is, that's fine. I just was curious how far that free-for-all goes. And I don't know the answer. That's why I'm asking. 
Well, the First Amendment is, it's a free-for-all in the same sense that it is. Right. And it's just not specific to signs, right? So obscenity laws that apply right. also apply here. Hate okay. speech laws that apply also apply here. Okay. But it's All just right. not specific to signs. Right, right. I would, that's, I'm just, you know, I'm just asking. Sure. Because, that's a good question. Know, well, because, you know, we have a, uh, we're very lucky in this country to have freedom of speech, but there are limits even right. on that. The Constitution uh, gives you the right, but the Supreme Court always interprets how far you go on those rights. But that's right. what I was asking. That that's all I want to know. I was just curious. Yeah, I, 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 would, that works. I would think also, anyone has the right to file a nuisance complaint at any time. Right. So if your neighbor put something up that was obscene, yeah. even though it was during election time or something or other, I would think that anyone has the right to file a complaint to the police department, and then it would be taken, you know, before the judge. But I don't know of anything. Yeah. After reading all these things all these years on, you know, on. Propaganda signs or whatever. I don't ever remember seeing anything about, you know, something that would be obscene of how you regulate it. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's to the chair. That's what I was asking because there are, uh, are things that are changing in this country, and we're part of it. And there are the. And I'm just asking for. Uh, the, and there might not be. Just if there isn't, there isn't. I'm just kind of curious. And it has nothing to do with sign. I mean, it does because obviously they're out there, but. And I think uh, Council President has a good point. I was just wondering, you know, as an option to the citizen who disagrees with somebody's comment, mm -hmm. is there an option to go, whether they're right or wrong, but an option to take it through the process? That's, and I think if, you explained if, that they can do that. Me, yeah. If I may again, yeah. Eddie may be able to tell you because we do, we did have one. Yeah. There was one that was a hatred uh, yard sign against their next door neighbor, but I don't what, remember what the result was. But it was something very hateful that was named, you know, name the next door neighbor or against the next door neighbor. So Eddie should be able to tell us how, what that's, the outcome was. That's after. a good question. I'm through the chair. That'd be a good question Remember just that? to ask him. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. I'm, I, through the chair? And I have to. Yes, sir. Uh, there's another one that I've seen three or four different signs in, mm -hmm. in Lincoln Park. Does this uh, uh, pertains to how many lumens? If you pull up to a sign, it's so bright you can't hardly see it. I mean, it should be limit. I think it's called lumens to measure light. There, uh, <laughs> there, uh, yes. So John and I have learned about um, uh, many words pertaining to sign lighting since we've been doing this. So we've learned that the word that's in our ordinance is foot candle, but that is another way of measuring lumens. Those are basically two I don't, different types of units. Like one is American like feet, and then lumens is more standard. So our general ordinance says that um, in the general illumination section, this is actually not a change, that no um, sign shall, that not more than a half a foot candle of light should, should be measurable on the other side of a property line. So however bright it is on your property, fine, but we're measuring it like no more than half a foot candle should come <sighs> across the property line. I would like to do a little bit more research um, into that particular um, regulation because I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not sure how that works on all illuminated signs um, and if that is in fact true, especially when some of them were trying to gain some visibility for. So I, I think that that portion needs, it has a regulation that I think works for now. Um, we'd like to look into that one just a little bit more deeply. I believe they have a tool or a reader of some type Yes. You can just, it says yep. lumens. I think maybe you got to get one for the building department so they can go out and check these signs. Because I was blinded a couple times by these signs. Sure. Did you hear that? I may see by a light in meter. In the Wolverine building, they made them change the, the lighting yes, on the Wolverine because they put the new lights up and it reflected too much on Bert Howie's house. I mean, Burley's house and that. And they had to bring an outside company in and everything else for the brightness. So. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Thank you, sir. Um, regarding your question, where you were talking about this uh, sign that was put up that was hateful toward the next door neighbor, was this during an election or was this just was done without? No, it's painted on the side of the house, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. oh. okay. Well, I, I, I'm just trying to make a few notes yeah. here to discuss with your city attorney mm -hmm. and, and I'm just trying to get an understanding of that. Time. Okay, and then when it was when you were talking about Mr. Parkinson, when you were talking about brightness, were you talking about like glare 
the sign as you were driving or walking, it was like it made you wish you had sunglasses, that kind of thing? Yes. That's, uh, was a glare well, issue? We go back to the one that uh, Guns President brought up. It was on I-75. It reflected all through the neighborhoods. And through the bedroom windows? Yeah, through the, all through the windows of the neighborhoods. So, I mean, so there were issues. That was, a, that was a big issue right there. So that's an issue for and John then, uh, and I to take up in terms of glare. Cotton, with, uh, glare. Fort Street at the gas station. They had that so bright when you pulled up to the stoplight, okay. it almost blinded you. Okay, all right. So, I mean, it's, it's all over the city. You have different signs. And more and more of them are getting to be these uh, brighter signs are just fluorescent. So it's going to be a problem. It is a small problem now. It's going to be a large problem in the future. Well, that's why um, Leah and John and I, um, your, your staff, are, are uh, looking for your comments tonight in terms of flashing or how often or how many. And uh, that's, we're searching for the, uh, an ordinance that the consensus of you can s support. And, and so we want to try to refine this as we go. Thank you. Well, no strobe light effect. That's what you're saying, flashing. So that should be nothing that uh, trying to gain your attention by. I, I think you're going to get there at some point to flashing and that kind of Well, so we, we actually, that part of the ordinance was not changed because you, we had pretty good controls on that. I believe the flash is, um, well, something is no more than five seconds. I want to say it's the flash. So it's nowhere approximating a strobe. Like any, any change in light has to have an interval of five seconds or more. So, and I'm happy to, to chat about that in some more detail, maybe after we chug through the rest of this presentation. But I did want to follow up quickly about um, whether the lack of limitation on the number of election signs should pertain to both the residential districts and the commercial districts. Should there be any control on elections, the number of election signs, signs in the, in, in, in the time of an election um, in the commercial districts? Do you feel the same way about that? I do. I do. I don't think there should be any control. Well, there has to be some limitation on this. We cannot have every square inch of every commercial property be covered by signs. I mean, I'm all for freedom of speech and all, but we cannot have it just a complete total nothing but hundreds of signs as you go down the street. That, that's not going to work in the commercial. And to be frank, the potential for abuse is much higher in a commercial property because they have incentive to, you know, there, there's some gain for more signs and we can't control what's on the signs and it's a different situation in a neighborhood. That would be another thing that I would think about if I were in your shoes. In my opinion, you should keep it similar to what it is now for the commercial properties. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll suggest some language that is analogous to what we have now and we'll see how that goes. Other ways um, in which, other things that had to change in order to conform with Reed versus the town of Gilbert. Um, real estate, so the other next one was real estate signs. So temporary yard signs are allowed without a permit at all times, um, one, or, one or a couple. Um, so that should cover real estate signs. We should not need any additional um, regulation on that. And uh, construction signs, um, additional temporary yard signs are permitted during the permit that a construction period is active. So that's how we kind of time limited that. Some ease of use changes that we made. Um, the standards according to sign type table. So um, the packet that you have, the last half of it um, is filled with charts. Um, there's basically one per page per type of sign. And I tried to give you all the information that you need to install, to understand what the regulations are on any given sign sort of all in one place and collected there. So that is a reformatting, um, a reformatting that took place. So the way that it is here is uh, good for Muni code, and it's good for a format that you can hand to somebody. It prints on eight and a half by eleven paper. We also have um, kind of toyed around with, and I think we'll end up finalizing a version that is um, twenty-four by thirty-six, and basically has them all in a chart format for that can be displayed in the building department as the zoning districts are now. So there's some. Really just trying to, you know, if some, this is, as I said before, a, a portion of the zoning ordinance or, a, sorry, of the regulatory ordinance that gets used much more frequently and by many more people than a lot of parts of it do. So we'd like to make it as, as accessible as possible. The same with the reorganization. Um, any ordinance over time kind of gets things stuck into it, kind of where it goes or as close to where it goes as possible. And then it's always good to take everything out of the cupboard and then put it all back in a new place where it belongs. So that's kind of what we did. 
new and additional um, graphics as the ones that I've been pointing out to you, um, you know, both for uh, definitions and for kind of like the, the measurement and setback illustrations. And then we move the legalese, the heretofores and the thereins and the notwithstanding. So um, to make it enforceable, which again has really been a driving force um, of this um, revision, Signs are subject to annual inspection now. I be believe previously it said periodic, which is pretty well up in the air and subject to some argumentation. Um, the required maintenance is spelled out that it needs a fresh coat of paint, that you know things can't be loose, like the, the things that a sign must have to be considered in good repair are spelled out in the ordinance. The removal process is also spelled out and it now includes permission for the city to remove and assess a lien. This would be after written notice, this would be after a period of, I think it's 30 days of non-compliance, but that does at least give us the tool to do something besides litter the property <laughs> when it is not complying with our ordinances. And then the removal process was engaged um, in several places for public safety. Um, so that would be signs that are sort of in danger of, of falling or otherwise creating a hazard themselves. Um, for traffic safety, that would be a sign that, as you say, it strobes or resembles a police car or in other way, pr ways provides a hazard to traffic um, and to structures with no sign because those need to be removed. They just need to be removed. Is the annual inspection and with the <coughs> hundreds of signs that we have in town or maybe thousands of signs, is that something that can be done? Well, it doesn't say that we have to inspect them every year. It just provides us with the authority to do so. So um, there's nothing in there that says, you know, well, if we didn't come to inspect your sign last year, then everything about it must be fine. It just says that should we ever be in a position where we are able to conduct such a program that we are legally able to do so. If I may. Good. Will you attach a fee to this? No, you're not going to have a fee for another inspection, are you? We have not. So we have not gone to, got into the fee schedule at all. Okay. But, and I'd be happy to take your comment. Okay, I just don't think we fee them to death. So I don't really think we should add another. But I have a question on the removal process. Yes. Currently, we can't go into someone's, someone calls and complains about the junk car in the backyard. However, they got a privacy fence around it. Police department, the uh, ordinance officers can't go in that backyard because of some state regulation that Amy Higgins found or whatever. So how can we go in and remove this sign? How can we go onto their property? Can't well, we just issue tickets? I don't know if we can legally go in and remove something. It's not like a dangerous building. or I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. We'll confirm <laughs> that with Amy Higgins okay. and Ed, but the consensus at this point is it's not in fenced in and locked out of property. Okay. So if it's a public sign uh, meant for advertisement that's not being maintained to a, a standard of, of which would turn into blight, we have the right to request them to maintain it, maintenance, or remove it. And okay. like we do for buildings, we have the right to then uh, take action and put it on their tax rolls. Okay. That's good. <laughs> Um, and then finally, sketch required uh, standards for number and type of sign. So that's what I alluded to about, you know, we've just been dealing this like one sign by one sign, but what about the whole collection of signs on the property? So we've added to the application process basically just a sketch. It doesn't have to be, you know, a fancy architect produced drawing or anything, but show us all the signs on your property. And we've established limits um, per sign type, which those are right there on the on the pages. Temporary and portable signs, two sign types per parcel. Freestanding signs, one sign type per parcel, that kind of thing. So we really kind of tried to encourage business owners to take a holistic view at the number and type of their signs and to, I mean, for sure maximize everywhere there is to be maximized, but to put them together in a way that makes sense. And then finally, um, next, I, next steps after this um, are to revise this, um, this ordinance according to the feedback that we receive from you, whether that's today or in the coming weeks. <laughs> then it will go for a legal review. No sign ordinance is ever adopted without a fine tooth going over by the attorneys, and so that is absolutely on deck. Um, an application and fee schedule, which um, already, you know, we can see that the application didn't even match the existing ordinance, so there's some revisions that are expected there, and the fee schedule, of course, will come before you. And then there will be the formal adoption. We'd like to 
send those all together at once and wrap all that up. After the adoption, um, we would like to package this information into a user-friendly format and distribute. Everybody, all the businesses should be afforded the opportunity to know about the new regulations. And then we can finally, I know John is so thrilled, begin enforcement. <laughs> and that's all I have for you. Did, John, were you going to make a presentation with this? Or is no. it? <laughs> well, I want to... We're in line. I just <coughs> wanted to speak one clarification <coughs> of your Loomis question. For clarification, one lumen is equivalent to one foot candle per no. square foot. So they're now match. They match. What we don't know is your correct answer is what is that lumen coming off of LED lighting? And the is the issue is that oftentimes LED light string lights have ability to be powered at different levels of, of electricity and produce a different level of lumens. So on that basis, if we want to govern LED lighting as a certain level of lumens, right now it's half a candle, half of half a candle. So what we do going forward, we'll have to make that plan and we would have to regulate that through a, a light meter to determine that. To the chair, I think it was uh... Ed Zellink had brought it up on that sign on uh, 75 or the Wolverine building. I believe Ed Zellink uh, came up with something with the lumens on that. That's how that got turned down. Because people on 75 were being blinded. All the neighborhoods were being blinded. People couldn't sleep because their, their bedrooms were all lit up all night. So uh, you can check out Ed Zellink about the lumens because he seemed to know about them. I've added to, 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 to our list for discussion. Okay, I'm going to... Before we go to additional comments from uh, council, there was a gentleman from the audience at Sir podium here at the rostrum. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Hey, I apologize. Uh, you got to identify yourself, sir. Gerald Molnar, Lincoln Park, Michigan. I live on Clover Lawn. Been in Lincoln Park for 74 years. I'm 79 years old. The signs, I got a list here that I was listening to her presentation over here. The election signs I'm having a problem with, and that is that I did not hear anything mentioned on size. It seems to me that they get bigger and bigger. Back when Vic Benora, I used to come to the city, <laughs> was the mayor, they were allowed to be four by four. Now, I've seen them five by 10, five by 12. If you do a Michigan left, you got a huge sign blocking the way. So I would like to see a election sign for a specific size, if that's, if that's you know, something you can think about. The second thing I have is I'm real disappointed driving down Fort Street or Dick's. These signs, the feather signs, the blinking signs, the bright signs, it, it, it just looks trashy, guys. I'm very disappointed with it. And I don't know, sitting here listening to everybody here today, yes, we're all concerned, but I don't see anything really happening. And you're right, we can't be going out there fining people, we can't be charging all of this. I think personally, we let it get out of hand. You know what I mean? So now we've got the Band-Aid and we've got to get out there and we've got to do something. And that's the reason I seen the article and I decided to come by and say my piece. All right? And again, I do apologize because I haven't been here for a long time. You know? Right. And the other thing is color. You know, I, a sign is a, it can be a building, correct? If they paint it bright blues and greens and purples and yellows, is that not a sign? If it's a solid color, probably not. But if there's a design on it, maybe. You know, I, I don't, we're not Burner Highway, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so disappointed. And the feather ones, like I just said, we don't need them. They're a distraction. They just, I, they're not something that I, I like seeing flying down there on Dix, Fort Street, Southfield. And as for the, the brightness, yes, we need to get a, a little, the meter's not that expensive, and we need to get them toned down a little bit. They're doing 45 miles an hour. And I appreciate the council's time today. And I will probably, I haven't worked since I was 70, so I'm 79, so 
I'll probably be back. To, uh, you can uh, bend your ear a little bit. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, sir. Is there anyone else want to be heard on signs, please? Hi, Leslie Lynch Wilson, Lincoln Park resident. Um, I like what I heard, but I just have one comment. I think the f feather flags um, should be allowed for special events because at the farmer's market, we have a couple of them that we use. They go up about 11 o'clock. By 3 o'clock, we take it down because the market's over at 4. Um, Taylor Farmer's Market has five or six. They use long pardee, so I think for special events, I think those should be be allowed. I agree for the businesses. It gets a little cluttered, and those flags aren't that qual good quality flags, so after a while they they fade. But everything else, I like what I heard tonight. <clears throat> Through the chair? Yes, go ahead. I have a question. For the campaign signs, Leah, I know that our current ordinance does have a size uh, on there, yep. so you might want to just look at that for, for the sizes. But a question on the application and uh, and fee. Not all the signs are going to require a fee, will they? Because I'm thinking, I'm sure, like the poll signs, because they have to be reviewed. But would, I guess, a, just some explanation as to what signs would require a, a fee? Any sign that needs administrative direction? should have a fee because it's going to take somebody the paperwork and the time to make that final decision. So if it needs a if it needs if it needs to be applied, there probably should be a minimal fee. If it needs to be reviewed, it probably needs a fee that significantly evaluates the ordinance to the size of the sign, whether it's going to be a wall facing a street sign or a side sign that's going to be 25% smaller or all the different window signs. That'll have to be regulated because sooner or later we'll have to do what is being asked and we'll be allowed to walk into every business in a year's time if we want to to evaluate that they're complying with our sign ordinance so that it doesn't continue to get out of control as it may have gotten over the last 15 years. Okay, thank you. I would also just add into the record um, that there, there are, just so that we know, um, size restrictions on the campaign signs their yard sign only yard signs have the additional sort of election um, permission election period permissions. The wireframe signs, um, you know, the yard ones are maximum area of six square feet. That's the standard. The one you're picturing, that's six square feet. And then the rigid frame ones can be bigger at sixteen square feet. So that would be the four by four that you were referencing. Good chair. Yes. John, are you talking about going and charging people a fee? The first time in there, or are you talking about going in there when it fails and charging a fee? We haven't, we haven't done anything with the fees until we hear how the council wants us to address them. But obviously, if there's a sign, like there are three signs that we put on hold right now that are in my office that need a plan review, a, a, a sign review. Those have a fee for us to do that application right now. And they have to pay that fee for me to do that sign application based on our ordinance. But we held them off until we get through this meeting, and then I can give them a better projection of what we're going to do with what they want to do in their building or on a pole sign that's present in front of me. Well, I believe if you go into a building and the sign is fine, you're just going to review it, there shouldn't be a fee. I agree. But if you have to redo the sign, or they're putting up a new sign, or they do maintenance or whatever, yes, there should be a fee for that. That, that is, that is, that's where the ordinance is written presently. We can't charge them for us walking in and evaluating if their signs are correct. That's that's on the city's cost to, to do our, our due diligence in code enforcement. But it'll be theirs to repair a respondent. If they have to, to get a permit to correctly use a sign the way they're supposed to, they'll need a fee to, to, to comply. Okay, anything further? Then there being no further discussion, the study session adjourned at, it looks like, 7.26. 25. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Leah. Leah. Thank you. Uh, John, we appreciate your effort. Do I usual? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm ready. I need it. Thank you.
get rid of my coffee. Thanks.